So here's the nightstand that I made. It's one of my first real projects that I am proud of, to be honest with you. It's just a shaker inspired side table or nightstand. It's got a little bit of an improvised sliding dovetail on the bottom there. I just glued some pieces on that had a little angle. And here you can see it rides on the rails with the sliding dovetail there. Mortised in on the sides. It's just very, very simple. I made this out of really cheap stuff. And uh, I did it with almost all or all hand tools, I believe. I just don't remember. I made a set of these. And the first one took about, you know, two or three weeks because I didn't really have a plan in mind and I changed it as I went. And then the second one I was done, I think in a week, it was just really simple working in my spare time. And I just really love it. So we're gonna take this design and modify it a little bit. Actually, strip away the modifications I've made to make this and go back to something a little more traditionally shaker. And I'm probably gonna end up painting it just depending, uh, but it's up to you, whatever you wanna do. I bought this book, How to Build Shaker Furniture by Thomas Moser. It's a really great guide. I love shaker. It's one of my favorite styles. In fact, it is my favorite style. I pair it with a lot of things. It's timeless and uh, kind of looks mid-century. You can m adapt it really easily to make it look incredibly modern and new. In fact, it never stops, in my opinion, looking new and modern just because of how clean it is. Now. That said, we have here in this book, which is, like a, which is a great book, by the way. This book has a bunch to offer. It's got detailed drawings. It's got everything you wanna know about the woods that the shakers use. It has a little bit about some tools, from hand tools to power tools. And it's got a little bit of a um, background on who Thomas Moser and his furniture company is. Uh, the shaker table that I'm, that I'm gonna be building, more or less, is this. Now, I didn't have this book when I first made my table. I just looked online and asked my wife for some input and we just made what we wanted. And I made a lot, like I said, I made a lot of mistakes in that. And now that I see this, this is actually a much easier design. Well, it's an easier design than I made because we're not gonna try and integrate the sides. We're just gonna mortise in the rails here and here. And then we just mortise in the panels and the sides and then the top will just get attached with some, either some screws or some clips or whatever. And the legs are just really nice tapered pieces. We've got the measurements here, according to the book. It's the top here, as you can see, is 18 inches square. We dovetail the rail into the top of the legs. So this right here gets dovetailed into the top. This is mortise and tendon in. And then the sides are gonna be mortised in. This is an inch and an eighth. I'm gonna actually make mine a little wider. I'm gonna make mine about an inch and a half and then taper them down. Five eighths, again, is just a little narrow for me. So we're gonna taper it down to about three quarters. 27 and a half, well, a standard table height is about 30. So if you wanna go up to 30, that's fine too. Our current nightstands are at 30 inches. And there you go. That's sort of a look at how it's built. You get the dovetail into the top. You put in some rails inside the side panels or the skirts or whatever, and then you screw through them to get to the top. And then you just put these drawer runners on the side. It's just a really simple design. It's a whole bunch of straight lines. I don't think it really matters what your skill level is. This is a perfect beginner project. It's If you are a beginner, like I was when I first built something, when I first, first built my nightstand, uh, it's gonna take you a while to think through it. You're gonna make a lot of mistakes along the way. I wouldn't go with like some exotic hardwood on this. Just maybe start with pine and see how you see how that turns out. And then if it does turn out well, then either keep it or make another one even nicer. That's basically what I'm doing. I'm making a third one of these because I'm gonna give this one as a gift to my sister. I'm gonna make this an all hand tool build and I'm gonna split this across a couple of videos. Today I'm gonna to process the wood. I bought, I've got two two by fours. So if you want, you can make this a two, two by four challenge. And today I'll start by processing those two by fours, getting them all uh, ready to go, making some of my first cuts. One of the first things you're gonna wanna do in uh, a project, you're gonna wanna make a cut list. So Here's an example of the cuts you'll have to make for this project. The ones with an asterisk beside them is because you're gonna have to factor in another three quarter inch 
on each side for the tenons. One thing I want to make really clear is how we're going to get the three quarter inch thick stock. Since a two by four is an inch and a half thick, we're going to rip it down the middle on its thickness and then we'll have two pieces that are three quarters of an inch thick. And that's how we'll glue up panels. We're going to cut it down the middle and then glue them side by side. We're going to start by doing some layout work. I have here my template for the leg. It's, uh, it's got all my um, measurements written on it. You can see it's 28 and a half inches long. Uh, I've got it clearly marked. It's an inch and a half wide at the top. There's the bottom. It's three quarters of an inch wide at the bottom. And it's just an inch and a half all the way down until we get to six inches. And at six inches is where the taper starts. And it tapers all the way down. I would recommend you just go ahead and make a template for this now. You're gonna have to make four legs out of this and do it on four sides. So you're talking at least 16 times you would use this just on this one project. And it's like I said, this is my third one I'm making of these. And I know it comes in really handy to have this. By the way, I have plans for this. So just reach out to me if you want them. This section here looks like my best shot on this board. I'm gonna need four out of them. So I'll lay out two on the end. I'll lay out two on the end here. And then I'll lay two here. After the legs, the, uh, the other thing that requires the most amount of wood is gonna be the top. It needs to be 16 by 16, but I always like to cut it a little bit long and leave extra just in case. So I'm actually gonna make, uh, make it 17 by 17, or leave enough to make it 17 by 17 and go from there. I'm gonna mark 17, then 34, and then 51. Next we're going to lay out the piece that we're going to need for the back of the nightstand. And I'm not particularly worried about the quality of this wood. It'll almost never be seen. But even so, you don't want to choose a, a piece of junk. And since this is three and a half inches, when I double it, it's going to be seven if I leave it. But I'll probably cut off about a quarter inch on each side, half inch. And then when we double it, we're up to six again. All right. We need 12 inches off this one since it's the back. There we go. I only need that. That's all I need for it. Then, uh, and then I've got a little bit of a crack here, so maybe I can turn this into some of the um, the the sliders or the or the other rails that I need for the interior. So I'll probably mark that. Let's mark this on the back here, back, and then rails, and then for the sides, we're gonna need 10 inch long pieces. Uh, but we need two sides, so we actually need to cut out two sections of 10 inches. There's 10 inches. And then we're going to actually measure like 10 and an eighth or 10 and a quarter here. Just give ourselves some room. That's fine. Mark it out for sides. And then we're going to cut on this side of the line. So mark it there. And the last thing we're gonna need is a nice piece left over for the drawer front, and that's gotta be 10 inches wide. We're gonna leave ourselves some space here. Nothing there. I'm gonna mark out, I'm gonna mark out a nice little section here. I'm gonna mark 11 inches, just to make sure I give myself every chance of getting it right. Check the back even, looks fine. There we go. And this is the drawer front. All right, so we're gonna take stock, no pun intended, but we're gonna take stock of everything we've done and make sure we've got it. We've got one, two, three, four legs. I've got a little divider here to make sure we don't cut the top or bottom of any. We've got the drawer fronts, which we're gonna double to get our four inches. We've got two sets of sides, each of which we're gonna cut and cut down the middle, rip down the middle and, uh, and book match them or glue them up. Then we've got a top, which is 
one, two, three sections of 17 inches, which will give us more than enough for the top. Then we've got a back, which is uh, 12 inches long. We've got some extra stuff, and then we're good to go. Now because of how rough that saw is, it cuts fast but it's really rough, what I'm going to do is cut the refining cuts over at the miter saw. Alright, we've got everything cut out in rough form. Now we're going to take the time to cut out the blanks for our legs. What I'm going to do is, we've got, we've got the dividing line in the middle here. I'm going to draw one on the back side just because I like the extra help as I saw, just to make sure I don't go, go off track. I've drawn a line on the back side just to guide me, and I'm just going to take my rip saw and cut them out. Worst part is over.
all told, about eight minutes to do that. And here we've got some leg blanks ready to go. Okay, that's about it for today. We did a lot of planning and sawing and we ended up with the main pieces cut out. And the biggest thing so far are the legs. We traced them out using a pattern or a template and we just ripped them down the middle. Got four legs. Then we have to plan out three pieces for the top. Cut them down, the, we're gonna rip them down the middle and glue them up to make one large 17 by 17 panel, which will eventually then cut down to 16 by 16. We've got one piece for the back, same thing. We're gonna cut it, glue it. Basically all of our pieces we're gonna do that too. I guess now that I'm thinking about it, using a two by four for this is probably not a great idea. I would say if you're gonna do this, get a two by four to get your legs out of, then get some, get like two one by fours, like eight, in, eight feet long, whatever. That'll save you a lot of time having to rip these down the middle and uh, then glue them back up. You're gonna have to glue them up anyways, but yeah, that's my best suggestion. Save you a ton of time that way. So anyways, uh, I'll see you around for the next video where I'm gonna be shaping the legs and we'll get those. And then from then we'll cut all the pieces and glue them up and then we'll do a work. Then we'll start on the assembly. All right. Thanks so much. Hope it's been enjoyable and useful and we'll see you, uh, see you next time.